So, after 3,000 miles, we sailed lush across the ocean. We arrived into Antigua. We had the boat fully prepared. Then we, you know, the Antigua to Panama trip, it's about 1,000 miles. And you'd sail south through the Caribbean, through the ABCs to San Blas, and then into Panama before then the fleet goes into the Pacific. So we decided to sail south and we went through there with all of your guests and uh, we had such a blast. And uh, do you remember Tobago Cays? Well, that? Tobago Cays I've been back a couple of times since because it, it, it has that magic about it, hasn't it? Um, one, uh, the locals do the most amazing barbecue on yeah. the beach um, and fresh lobster, if you remember. And all the guys coming to the side of the boat telling you, oh, please, please have a look at Mr. Wonderful, Mr. Splendid, and Mr. Romantic, and all of these guys <laughs> coming with the boat, because that's what would be the, the big name on the side of the boat. Yeah. So I remember particularly Mr. Wonderful, we used to buy lobsters from him. And uh, his wife would then cook them, and we'd come back that evening um, for a barbecue on the beach. I mean, they were very special times. You never forget that. No, you, you know, never it's that. just saying, like, my God, how lucky have we been to be able to be, you know, the freedom, the fresh air, just different planet, different world, particularly from the world that I've been used to, and that is um, motor racing with thousands and thousands of people all hoarding around trying to do certain things. This was the completely opposite, uh, where you had space, you had time, you could talk to people, you could have a nice drink, you could have nice food, uh, and then you would sail. And the great thing about the Caribbean, I think, is that it's conducive to, to sailing. And there are so many fine sailing boats. It, it's a really, it's a mecca for sailing boats. The San Blas, I mean, what an amazing place. And of course, up and only, only till recently, the currency was coconut, so we had to barter and trade with the kids. Well, I think that, you know? they're not still, you know, I think the, one of the last um, territories in the world that still operates in, in a barter system. Uh, we, we used to, uh, because we had the ability of making our own water, we had big water makers on, on, on Lush at the time, the 885, and um, they just wanted fresh water, and we got. Uh, vegetables and various things that they've been growing are uh, obviously fresh fish but you know we were able to catch our own fish we had yeah. every conceivable space <laughs> on, on that 885 full of full of tuna you know San Blas was different because I'd never come across anywhere like that yeah but we moved on there. quickly after that I think you know um, we probably got held up a little bit in that marina for yeah in uh, shelter bay that's right it's just for the measurement for the canal. well it was not just the measurements but we have to be uh, what people have to understand is that obviously the panama canal is not there for us so we have to squeeze in at the back of these panamexes um and of course paul only you can tell the story about how um you know with the mules when the yeah, tide right. is coming up and um you know you have to keep the tension on all the ropes because otherwise the boat moves around and it was only when if you like the Panamax started the engine up and this huge surge of, of water uh, and, and going up we nearly lost the boat if you remember yeah rightly. I do remember I always re re remember that it was the last lock through and the ship in front because you're right that the mules are these li little trains that pull you through and the ship in front then had dropped his lines from the mules and have put his engines into yeah. forward. And so that sent this like eight knots of current down the lock. But we weren't prepared for it. And the guys dropped the lines. And the next thing then, we're because we're in a raft with Pandemonium, the Oyster 82. And the next thing then, we're doing this <laughs> over towards the wall like this. And I've got the thrusters full on. She's not moving, she's not coming around. And, and Al saved the day. He, however he did it, he managed to get a turn on the cleat. I don't know how he didn't we lose stopped. a hand or a finger or something. I know. Because it was unbelievable what he did. It was unbelievable. And then so he managed to stop us. We stopped. I remember I spun round and all I could see was you and the pilot with this huge glass of whiskey. And he Move said, on, Paul. And he said, and he said, oh, he goes, oh, thank God. That would have been a lot of pa paperwork. I recall Panama was one of the things that sticks in my mind as being one of the key yeah. fun 
and enjoyable things that we did on the trip. It's, it's an amazing thing. You think about Galapagos, but you also think immediately about Panama. It's a yeah. trip that people have to do. I remember Marie and I deciding that we wanted to go inland um, I I on the canal and most of those big ships are just going up and down and we went off down a river on canoes and stayed with local Indians and ate with them and drank with them and stayed with them uh, for a short period in mind but at the same time just to get off the boat and to do other things and that was so amazing how they treated us and how they you know they weren't nervous or apprehensive they were uh, charming warm uh, embracing and um, that's what I think gives you the great sense of going around the world different countries different systems different religions different outlooks in life um, fantastic I would strongly recommend it and for me the the Panama going up that river with these new uh, Indian people um, I'll never forget it every kind of species that you can imagine all swimming around going crazy that's what Galapagos did it gave you the opportunity to live and to touch and to feel and to cherish nature <laughs>